Hello and greetings from Iceland, but it's time for an update. But first, I want to mention that I just got back from a tour to Reykjavik and uh, South Iceland. And the good news is that I managed to fly over many locations to shoot uh, videos and photos that will be useful when it comes to my regular updates. But uh, I have my own map with places of interest and I'm a little by little getting uh, all the shots I need. The plate boundaries are in my priority category, but uh, I'm also after some tourist content these days. And in a way, it's a project that will never come to an end. And since I'm also chasing light, sometimes getting lucky, sometimes not, there are times when I need a second trip. But uh, more about that later on, and uh, let's move to the earthquake update. And uh, I see a reason to mention four locations this time. There is nothing big happening actually. But I'm starting with Grindavík and the Reykjanes Peninsula. And uh, first I want to mention this new science report. But uh, it's way too complicated for me to even try to read through it. So I'm leaving a link for those of you who want to take a deep dive to the mantle under the Reykjanes Peninsula. But it looks as the magma that erupted last year has its roots in at least uh, three different places below the Reykjanes Peninsula eats with its own chemical composition, or like I've mentioned before, that eruption was yet another chance for scientists to learn something new from Icelandic volcanoes. But uh, I'm going to stick to the surface where I can use my drone. Things have actually cooled down on the peninsula and uh, near Grindavík, but it's nowhere close to the norm when it comes to earthquakes, and things look pretty much uh, as after the December events when the situation cooled down, but never fully though. So it looks like a cycle, and our experts have mentioned that uh, they don't expect an eruption this summer, and the autumn is still the, well, I can't say official forecast, but they did however mention it the other day, that September was a way more likely scenario than a summer eruption. It is noticeable though, that I see the seismic activity spread along the complete peninsula again, especially during the last days, and furthermore, we see the activity stretch all the way up to Langjökull glacier, or by the end of the plate boundaries, this part of them. So that glacier will be our next stopover. Now I'm using a map that includes all earthquakes in 2022, and the last week a rather strong earthquake struck under the glacier, but our experts say it's not a tectonic event, but our glacier tour starts here in Borgarhörður, it's a white and deep fjord in West Iceland, only one hour's drive from Reykjavík, and uh, from there we will move up to the assets of Iceland's uh, second largest glacier, but the first signs of unusual unrest occurred last year on this mountain ridge. So it's time for the drone, first overlooking that unexplained earthquake location, but uh, it's just uh, yet another mountain, and the earthquake swarm faded out, but uh, as we look down from here, we will find something more for the eye, or uh, this lava field, with yet another strange Icelandic name for you, or uh, Hallmundar Hraun. This lava field originates from the last major eruption by Longjökull Glacier, or since the early 10th century, and it shows as well what this system is uh, capable of. But uh, this is, however, one of those systems that we could know more about, it has not been a priority to study the system as much as possible, mostly due to the little activity around there during historic times. It's believed that two calderas are located under the glacier, but the eruption that made this enormous lava field did not occur under the glacier though, but just beside it. And nearby we have this huge shield volcano, and it is located on the fissure swarm from Longjökull glacier and uh, its name is Skjaldbreður, so there is no question about it that uh, this used to be a huge system, but uh, one of our experts mentioned the other day that this part of the plate boundaries is dying. Now, uh, I can't explain what they meant with that, and uh, this is in fact just the northeast end of the same plate boundaries that have been shaking the Reykjanes Peninsula for the last two years, and there are days when I see the 48 hour earthquake list line up all along the plate boundaries from the Reykjanes Peninsula through Thingvellir, but we are there now overlooking uh, Skjaldbreður, and uh, this part of the plate boundaries 
is very much alive and behind the lava shield uh, skjaldbreiður we find a long jökull glacier but uh, I'm going to drive up there from Borga further and uh, our first stopover is here by this uh, strange waterfall but the river found its way under the lava field from long jökull where it created this uh, strange but uh, very beautiful formation but the lava field is over 50 km long covering 200 square kilometers and the total volume is estimated to be uh, two three cubic kilometers and i have a good contrast show for you today as we move on from this fjord which uh, is as good as they get here in Iceland when it comes to agriculture and the natural beauty and after some driving by this lava field we find a terrible road that's only open during summer but uh, it is however the best road in Iceland if you want to uh, get close by a glacier and uh, there are bonus features on a way up like uh, untouched land after the fire and the ice did its job the land here is very rough and it's so strange to drive through this uh, drastic change in landscape in uh, less than an hour or uh, from the fertile farmlands to this and uh, as we move higher up we find the edge of the mighty Longjökull glacier or where the edge is now and from there it's possible to get a guided tour up on a glacier or visit this huge uh, man-made glacier cave that uh, even contains a chapel so if you need a cool place to get married this is it but I do advise you not to do a glacier trip like this tourist and find yourself stranded up on a glacier on Toyota Yaris there are better cars for that but uh, this is more or less what's happening there now it's the dying end of the plate boundaries but not quite dead yet and uh, I would like to know if this uh, is in any way related to the events on the Reykjanes Peninsula but the last seismic and volcanic chapter there occurred during the 11th and the 12th century or not so long after the last major events up here but enough about Iceland's second largest glacier now and let's go for the big one or Iceland's hotspot Bárðarbunga Caldera under Vatnajökull glacier we have seen two earthquakes over magnitude 3 recently and uh, I'm only mentioning them as a formality now or like I've said before we do get 8, 10, perhaps 12 earthquakes every year over magnitude 3 so if we would get the third one soon then it uh, might be a reason to take a better look at this but uh, this giant caldera is after all reloading after the 2014 eruption and uh, then I'm moving to the Tjörnes fracture zone that I covered in a recent video we just got an earthquake by the mouth of Eyjafjörður but it's the same location that was giving us a hard time up north uh, two years ago so it's just business as usual but uh, it would not surprise me though if we would get some uh, stronger activity there this year but then it's just uh, my guess and this is more or less what I've noticed since my last update but uh, even though things might stay calm for a while I do have some volcano videos coming up and uh, I've already created a new playlist with uh, geology content that's uh, more timeless than my regular updates and uh, it includes long and short uh, documentaries and uh, one of my next videos will be in that category covering the volcanoes around uh, Reykjavik and I did manage to get all the footage I needed in my last trip and that's gonna be a good show so I'm already into that script but it's uh, summer now so I need to upload some uh, tourist related content as well mainly local information and tips and my next video in the town series will be about the Eurovision town Husavik and uh, finally I have to mention that sometimes I notice my viewers asking for uh, longer bits then I can squeeze into my updates like today and uh, I agree fully since my uh, news related uh, updates have uh, limitations so I have been collecting shots to use in longer videos with music but it's a popular category on YouTube and uh, it might just be what my channel needs in order to thrive without natural disasters so I have uh, plenty of shows coming up in future but when I upgraded my channel to 4k I soon found out that I needed to upgrade my computer as well 
and uh, start to use uh, professional editing software as well, like uh, Adobe, where I can use my knowledge in Photoshop for color grading and more. But so far, I've been doing things the simple way. So I am getting a new computer in the next days and working on themes and ideas for my longer videos. But most importantly, I need to use the summer to the fullest when Mother Nature is showing me all its best sites. And the summer in Iceland is short, so I won't be as active uploading as I've been recently, unless we see some major seismic unrest or volcanic activity. But uh, I will, however, upload something new every week, and uh, with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.